Usually on the first map of Water Hazard, you encounter this dude who gives you supplies from above. But what you don't usually see about him is that he is standing on pallets the player cannot see. This is to keep the guy giving you supplies from not clipping onto the railings. For instance, when we break these pallets before the animation starts and head back down, you can now see his arms clipping through the bridge. Metrocops are actually a lot dumber than you think. Usually when you open this door, you get bombarded by bullets coming from a CP, but by grabbing an object, no matter what size, you can obscure yourself and the Metrocop won't shoot. There must have been a point in development where you could ride APCs as vehicles. Because if you press E on an APC, it will make a beeping sound, implying that you might have been able to drive it. There is however one exception. If you noclip over to this APC that shoots rockets at you, you can actually get into the vehicle by pressing E. There is no physical way to drive the APC, and once you are in it, you won't be able to get out. If you go over to where you first see the dropship without using the airboat, you will see in the distance a dropship completely stuck in midair. This is the dropship that deploys Metro Cops and only activates when you come around the corner with an airboat, but because we didn't bring it, it is frozen. If you go over to this building right here where Barney gives you the crowbar and no clip in it, you can see an unfinished room with dev textures and unused features. If you stack barrels over this ledge, or just no clip across, you can find an inactive APC lurking above the canals. The strange thing is, is that this is not a static prop, it is a live NPC that doesn't seem to serve a function. Stalkers in Half-Life 2 have extremely weird physics to them.
If you noclip to this part of Nova Prospect where Alex discovers that Mossman was talking to Breen, we could discover a ton of things. For one, Mossman is looking at a picture of Breen, and if we look beside her, Breen is right next to her pretending to talk on the intercom. What's weirder is that we can even kill Wallace Breen. And for whatever reason, this room where Mossman is has a fully fleshed out area that you don't usually see. The merry-go-round's physics in point insertion has completely different physics from any other merry-go-round. When pressing E, you can make the merry-go-round spin in your favor, but any other merry-go-round found in Half-Life 2 won't do this. This barrel, for whatever reason, is floating in mid-air. This is the only barrel that floats in the area, as every other barrel around doesn't float. You can go into the vent where Alex is supposed to arrive in Nova Prospect. If you noclip behind Dr. Breed's broadcasting camera, you can see an effect that you normally can't get a good look at. I thought so much of City 17 that I elected to establish my administration here in the Citadel so thoughtfully This happens to every other Overwatch broadcast you see in Half-Life. You should give serious consideration to doing your part for the revival of the species. We must make the most of the time we have, as it is by no means certain how much time we have secured ourselves before the Combine attempt to restore their dominion, as they certainly shall. Typically, there are a lot of secret goodies you can find all around a map in Half-Life 2, but some are more common than others. Here are a few places that has goodies that you've probably never even seen. When punting a paint can with your gravity gun, it is possible to create paint everywhere. The secondary trigger lets you grab things. You can throw them with the primary. Once you've picked something up, you can drop it gently by pressing your secondary trigger again. Pick up some stuff and toss it. <laughs> You can also 
also pull stuff over from a distance. Try grabbing those barrels from that ledge up there. Some glass in Nova Prospect completely defies logic. For example, the glass on the roof is indestructible, but the window on the wall is not. In the first map where you get the air bow, if you ditch it for a while and go over to the headcrab canisters in the corners, you will find headcrabs buried under the ground. Here are some places you can get to via rocket and grenade jumping. Detected. Warning. Vital signs critical. Going to this part of Water Hazard, if you noclip up into the sky, you will notice incredibly low poly models of trains. This is the only time you will ever see this model ever again. Some maps in Half-Life 2 have completely different textures than what they were gonna be. For example, here in the slum and the canals, the floor texture is mostly gravel and sludge. But going back to the map before, it's entirely made out of sand.
God. Here are some random places that you don't see, but have textures put onto them anyways. Illustration here, in the Citadel so thoughtfully provided by our benefactors. I've been proud to call City 17 my home. And so, whether you are here to stay... It is possible to get onto the Combine train in Highway 17. There is no physical way to save Laszlo. If you manage to kill all the antlions without anyone getting hurt, Laszlo will have a spontaneous heart attack and die. Sit on the sand. It makes the antlions crazy. Laszlo, don't move. No. Help! Ah. Dear God. Poor Laszlo. The finest mind of his generation. Alex at the beginning of Entanglement kills a normal Combine soldier even though the soldiers have a different skin because they're a Nova Prospect. There is a strange command in the console called Buddha Mode. Essentially what it does is that when activated, you will keep being able to take damage like normal, but you won't be able to die when you're at 1 HP. It is possible to completely skip the first section of Follow Freeman. There is a command in the console called Create Hairball, which essentially spawns in a bunch of strands that shoot out into the sky. I have no idea what the intention of this was, but if anyone in the comments can inform me about this, that would be nice. In Half-Life episodes, it's possible to load back into Half-Life 2's maps. 
here you can see me playing the map where Barney gives me the crowbar in episode 2. The flashlight system has changed, as well as Barney's model. The Citadel's on full alert. I've never seen it lit up like that. Get out of City 17 as fast as you can, Gordon. Take the old canals, right? They'll get you to Eli's lab. It's, it's a dangerous route. Playing Half-Life 2's maps on episode 2 also changes the grass sprites. It is possible to pull off a stealth mission on this part of Highway 17. When Combine soldiers are in their idle state, they can be killed by a pistol and one shot to the head. You can kick yourself from a server. There is a command in the console called Deathmatch, but doesn't appear to have a function when turned on. Using the command FOV underscore view model underscore blank, you can change the position of Gordon's hand. Fire completely ignores gates. This is death and finality. You have plunged humanity into free fall. Even if you offered your surrender now, I cannot guarantee that our benefactors would accept it. At the moment, I fear they have begun to look upon even me with suspicion. So much for serving as humanity's representative. In Fall of Freeman, you usually see the Combine soldiers book it to the buildings, but there's also a small patch of Combine soldiers on the roof that get rescued by a dropship. You can ricochet crossbolts. This crow, for whatever reason, gets stuck when trying to fly. The suppression field is getting fired by something you can't really see normally, but by no clipping, here's the full model of what it looks like. In a normal state, Half-Life 2 has really shiny Q maps that get applied onto textures. But by typing in matte underscore specular zero, the shiny textures will go away. Strangely though, the shiny textures will stay onto the windows even if it's off. There is a command called Crate Flashlight. What it will do is spawn in a static light of what your flashlight looks like from a different perspective. It can be used to create some really scenic scenes.
There is a command that allows you to fade in and fade out. All these billboards are breakable. Here are some really cool details that you might have not seen in the first map of Point Insertion. Welcome. Welcome to City 17. You have chosen, or been chosen, to relocate to one of our finest remaining urban centers. At the very end of episode 2 where the advisors kill Eli, they are spawned right outside of the warehouse. The strange thing is, is that these advisors are programmed to make a sound when they take damage. Some textures on Highway 17 are reversed. In some parts of the canals, you can find some random skulls peering through some places. Marf made a video discussing this in detail, but here are just a few examples of where the skulls can be. Some places in Half-Life are a lot bigger than you expect. Here are a lot of places that you don't really expect to be this huge.
Stalkers have completely different animations from Half-Life 2 and its episodes. Here's what it looks like in Half-Life 2. And here's what it looks like in its episodes. There is a random light here in this house in Sand Traps. In the beginning map of Our Benefactors, if you go down here and don't jump into the Citadel, you can find a headcrab chilling in a corner off the cliff with a boot and health kit. Here's a detail that most people miss in Half-Life 2 Episode 1. In episode 2, if you go up to this advisor pod, you can see some writings on it. 314 most likely means the 314th conquered city, URB most likely means urban, LOC means location, and 0017 means city 17. So this is a basic description of an advisor supposed to be sent off from the urban city of city 17. There is a command in the console called smooth stairs. Here's what smooth stairs 1 and 0 look like. There is often a lot of details in places in Half-Life that you usually don't come by or see it at all. Here are some areas in Half-Life that you've probably never paid close attention to. These letters on the cargo containers have strangely more higher poly counts than any other written words in Half-Life. It is possible to read a little bit of Kleiner's clipboard despite it being very low in quality. The first sentence of the clipboard is something Kleiner actually says to you. The Mark V hazardous environment suit has been redesigned for comfort and utility. At the beginning of Urban Fly in Episode 1, there are medics that say some dialogue that you can't really hear. Here's what they were trying to say when no clipped.
reconstruction is the complete removal of the combine's reproductive depression. When you see Dr. Green on a TV or broadcaster, the model used doesn't show his legs, which I find very funny. myself that our true enemy is instinct. Instinct was our mother when we were an infant species. Instinct coddled us and kept us safe in those hard scrambles. In episode one, there is a map called ep1 underscore citadel underscore zero zero underscore demo. When put into the console, it will freeze the screen and crash your game. Stalkers in episode one of eyes. When arriving back into City 17 in Anti-Citizen 1, the rooftop part of where you escaped is still there, but very deformed. In Half-Life 2, whenever you fail a mission, it will appear as this. The tone used in the message gives the impression that it was told by G-Man. But in Episode 2, because you're no longer under G-Man's influence, when failing a mission, it will appear as this, sounding a lot like a Vortigaunt. Here's what the train station you arrived in looks like when you're escaping City 17. What's strange about this is that there is a Metrocop spawner over here that will continue to spawn Metrocops after they die. In episode 2, if you noclip into this part of the map, you can see the rocket with unseen props and architecture. Here's a fun little place you can go to when killing time at Eli's base. In some areas in Half-Life 2, if you are quick enough, you can make two music tracks overlap each other. In this part of the canals, you can submerge yourself underwater without drowning. You can even see a visual glitch right here. Here where you have to complete a puzzle for goodies, there is magnum ammo in the cage.
What's strange is that you don't get the magmum up until this point, so I wonder if you were supposed to get it earlier in the game originally. Rebels and citizens can use pistols, but their animations are a little skewed as they don't have pistols by default. Here's what the post credits look like for Half Life 2. Lamar? Lamar! Blast that little. Where did she get to? Here in the ruined slums, you can see a refugee massacre. What you usually don't see about them is that they have a very long dialogue line which is cut short because they usually die. Here's what they sound like before they die. This medic appears to be helping an injured rebel, but as soon as you go around this corner, the rebel dies and the medic joins you. For whatever reason, if you go into the console and type in quit smoking, it will crash your game. There are six watermelons in Half-Life 2, two melons in Half-Life 2 Deathmatch, and one melon in Half-Life Alex. Rebels and Metro Cops, although never seen with, can use a crowbar. Okay. 